Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League is DC's answer to Spider-Man. Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League is the game that every Arkham fan dreamed. Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League is the most corporate feeling sequel to a franchise of a great game ever. Uh, uh, I guess so. Imagine if the Avengers game was the sequel to the Spider-Man games. However, is there a catch? Is this game actually kind of good? Welcome back to the Memory Game. On today's moment, we're remembering about the Suicide Squad killing the Justice League. A spoiler free review. And if it is worth your time. So put a smile on that face and we'll start with the story. The story is okay. It's kind of good, but only really due to the perfect characters in the game. Shark King is the sharkiest king ever, and Boom Boom Boomerang Boy is the funniest character ever written. So hats off to the writers. Warning, there will be some small spoilers ahead. Firstly, the characters from the Four Squad to the Justice League, they're all better than I would have thought, but it feels like this is a rock steady thing. They made the perfect Batman, and through this I've made the perfect characters that would react like this to these events. You can't speak about the characters without talking about the stellar acting from Joe Joe Joe, Harley Quinn's actress Terry Strong. Ain't nobody calling me a sidekick now. And Amanda Waller's Deborah Willis. You are dead already. And maybe one of my favourite characters in the game. She is an absolute psycho and doesn't give a duck about anything but winning that end game. And it's played out amazingly through the game, but I think it can be summed up in one line. I'm your daddy now, shark! But then we take the nerd goggles off that will consume anything with a DC or Marvel sticker on it and realise, are we this side character? This is probably because every couple of hours the Justice League do something pretty cool and we're just kind of sitting there in the background eating popcorn. Yes, 50% of the time maybe we do end up doing some cool Suicide Squad type things in the near future. Worth it! But for the lot of the game it feels like I'm sitting there and watching a more interesting story play out. Maybe it's because personally when I see this story it feels like maybe it's a Wonder Woman story rather than a Suicide Squad one. One of the reasons being that the group of characters we're playing as don't really want to be there and are just forced to do the bidding of Waller. And the fan favourite character there could arguably kick the crap out of the whole group. And she is having a blast of a story what we don't really see throughout the game, what sounds better than the one we're playing through. Making it feel like it's one of the world's game and we're just living in it. Oh, doing this with a cold is killing me. Remember to subscribe for future mumbles. As she has the connection to the Justice League, she has to come to terms of what she has to do to save the world. She could possibly make deals with villains to save that world. There is a lot of ground there for a possible better story with Wonder Woman at the helm. Alongside this, we have the Arkham in the room. What never leaves? Arkham, you've had too many. Go home. <laughs> Guess how long it takes to show Arkham in this game? 10 minutes, at least not as quick as it was in the trailer three seconds. Then there's a whole history lesson what just kind of gets annoying. Skipping over seven years of possible stories not the greatest idea and was a smack in the face. Glossing over possibilities like Demon Bat and the formation of the Justice League with the Arkham Batman in literally a cardboard cutout hurt my dark soul. Many die hard Arkham nutters must have been insulted by this. By the way in superhero games can we dial down this radio talk in the background? I don't need to listen to a podcast or an interview while I'm trying to kill something and if this happens in Wolverine I will cry. I can imagine it now Cyclops and Jean Grey's podcast of their relationship as I'm playing as Wolverine and nothing will beat JJ in Spider-Man so stop trying. Apart from this being a Superman game ripoff, a game that a lot of people wanted, I see no reason why we're in the Arkhamverse, as it's dangling the possibility of it in our faces and taking it away. Every time it annoys me a bit more. Why aren't we in some odd will shiz? It would make so much more sense. They literally brought back nearly all the same characters, but Joker somehow is back as well and he looks like whatever is worse than Wish. That doesn't mean there aren't some perfect moments, it's just a dark scene where the squad was stuck in a container. It was just good and really funny and made me laugh and that's not easy to find in a game. Uh, he asked a man to use his words. Someone is touching me. Not me. Actually, it might be me. I don't mind. 
I haven't laughed at a game for a long time, but this game made me laugh multiple times. That is a massive credit to the writing team. The story did let me down massively. I'm not spoiling it, but the end is rough. I don't know if I'd go Gotham Knights rough, but I would say it's pretty close. I don't know how you make a Suicide Squad game story, but this didn't feel like the right choice. It felt like the weird official death of the Arkhamverse. And personally, I didn't need that. Also, if the team knew about the Gotham Knights story, just change it. As in the end, it just made me feel like this. Maybe this game should have been called What If I Killed the Justice League? Oh, I didn't know how much this story really annoyed me until now. Why did they go down this route? Well, I know why. Money. What if the Mumbling Gamer gave you a gift? What if the Mumbling Gamer rewrote the story? And before we continue in this video, remember to subscribe for future mumbles. It's just there. Don't click. The possible concept for the whole game is set around Gotham's story and in between Arkham City and Arkham Knights taking place around Gotham and the Arkham Asylum. With it not being completely open world but instead in a God of War style, with it starting off as Harley Quinn mourning the death of Joker in Arkham and the first mission is her trying to escape the asylum but is caught by Batman in a horror like scene we've saw so many times in the Arkhamverse. With it ending with her being sent to Maximum X Hole, where she meets Deadshot, Shark Boy, and Boomerang with Amanda Waller, bringing Task Force X together to take down Batman. This starts a whole fight with the Bat Family as Waller can control Task Force X with some bombs over Batman that is uncontrollable. Then each character is completely different in an arcing way. You can imagine a fun fight with characters like Commissioner Gordon, Catwoman, and a lot more down this route. And if you're playing the villain, let us play the villain. We haven't seen Boomerang and King Shark in the Arkham world, and imagine a fight between King Shark versus Killer Croc in a boss fight. This does take Justice League out of the game, but it does give hope for the League members having their own in the future. And can you imagine the writing skills of this game in the context of this concept? Ah, comedy. Nothing can ruin this. So good. Ah, gas! The gameplay was surprising, but I feel like I've played it before, making it kind of boring. Maybe these looter shooter superhero kind of games aren't for me, especially when the loot is also kind of boring. And I'm playing about two or three games of service games already, and I can't fit another one into my schedule. So I hope, I hope studios start to dial down these development cycles of these games of service games. Oh, shoot me in the head and call me pudding, that escalated quickly. The gameplay for Suicide Squad though just felt kind of weird. Looking back at the Arkham series, they're probably some of my favourite games, apart from two of the four final bosses. I can't play this game without constantly thinking about it, and they keep on mentioning it every time I try. Every time I try to think of it, this is another kind of odd world kind of thing, like Injustice, then they remind me what universe we're in. And we all know the only reason we're actually in the Arkhamverse is a marketing tool, and it pisses me off even more game shouldn't feel like an actual weird tool and this weirdly did okay let's scrap all these negative mumbles and just talk about the gameplay the gameplay though is good shooting is good traversal is good even the difference between each character is good every character feels different i love the fact that different guns work with different characters this made the characters really stand out and this was one of my worries the gameplay did surprise me and it felt like yeah if there weren't some other games on the horizon maybe i could jump headfirst into this and grind out maybe 100 hours of hardcore end game stuff i didn't feel that way about the avengers game as i couldn't even finish it but there is one bad thing though the bland missions it's like i'm eating purple ice cream but it's vanilla it's either shoot this thing and then press a button shoot this thing and then keep on shooting this thing keep on shooting these things until you kill this amount of things and that's just the mix and repeat of it. Rocksteady has had some great missions in the past but elements like this can become repetitive quickly. The Arkham series had a different feel as you wanted to do it perfectly but in Suicide Squad it just feels like you point and shoot. It doesn't have that feel to the Arkham series where you would actually go into challenges just to use the different stealth mechanics and combat mechanics in place just to get that perfect score. And when you got that perfect score, it made you feel, well, like Batman. Then we have the bosses. What do you think the first boss in a DC game about fighting the Justice League will be? Do you think it will be Green Lantern, The Flash, or even Booster Gold? No, it's the famous The Cannon, the same cannon who was hired by Lex Luthor to kill the Superman. No, obviously, it's just a purple cannon. We do get some boss fights worth praising to your mother about down the line, but a lot of it feels like filling the mission blank in the boss fight with a boss health bar. Kill a certain amount of enemies, shoot the thing, press the button, 
you get the gist. It's just kind of bland, but it has some elements of fun in there to kind of keep you going. Personally, I feel like the weird thing of the Flash is kind of weird. I wouldn't complain if a dragon breathed fire, so why would I complain if the Flash, known for being fast, is fast as a boss fight? And really, the boss fight wasn't even that hard. At its core though, this game is meant to be a looter shooter, and when I think of that, I go Borderlands, but these opening boxes at the end of every mission, they're all cosmetics behind a paywall, takes the element of looter shooter out, and just makes it a shooter? Yeah, it feels like maybe if a looter shooter was cemented into this game, it would have that hook, that mm, but there is nothing here. Even Diablo enemies drop stuff to make it exciting. You bite the big bad and ooh, colourful candy. But look at this ding dong falling from the sky of a little colour. It's kind of boring and doesn't have me coming back for more. Then we have the world, which is detailed, but I wouldn't say fun. It's visual, visually pleasing. But with the kind of generic enemies about, nothing makes me stop and smell the poison roses. Rather, I'm just zipping around this Harley Quinn onto the next mission. It's just like I'm eating a big bag of bat mixed nuts. There's raisins, hazelnuts all together, and it's a decent experience. But every so often, I remember I'm eating mixed nuts, and you get bored. Before we wrap up this mumble, though, there is one thing we have to talk about. This. Look at his face. Look at the before, the after. How did we get here? How? Everyone knows the joke, the wish version of something, or the mumbling game is the wish version of Kadikarish. Look at this version of the Joker, calling it a wish version is a compliment. This is possibly maybe the worst possible Joker design I've seen, and it gives the gangster Joker a run for its money. The Arkham style Joker was maybe one of the best Joker designs ever. I'm not gonna stick around long enough to play as the Joker in this game, but looking at Mr. Freeze and Deathstroke, that could be a pretty fun experience, but looking at this design, and God knows what they will look like. I don't know if this was rushed just to say that you could play as the Joker in the future to get people to purchase, but I really can't believe how bad this Joker design looks. Gameplay wise, it does look pretty fun, though I can see people liking this game, I can't see many people liking this Joker design. It hurts my eyes, and I think it's time to move on to the killing joke. The worries I did have for this game did mostly come true, apart from one, the gameplay was a lot better than I originally thought. It did kind of get boring from about halfway of my experience, but still it was a lot better than I originally thought. I did go in thinking it was either gonna it was gonna be a mix between bad or good, and it did kind of come to that conclusion, but it was still pretty good. However, the story was a massive letdown for me, and also the games of service was there, but it wasn't as in your face as I thought it would have been that I was worried about compared to most games. It might be down the line when you get to that end game we're not, not currently at, but at the minute it's very easy just to kind of play it in any costume or any, you get enough guns, I don't know if you pay for guns, I'm not 100% sure on that, but still it's still pretty decent experience. I would kind of want more of a looter shooter feeling through this game, but didn't really have it. You either respect that they took the direction rather than making the Arkhamverse Justice League game in the Arkham style that 50 million people wanted, the direction is said killing the whole universe and starting from nothing or Wonder Woman. Originally my whole theory around this game was it was made for Superman, but now I think the spoon in the fork drawer has become a doubled pronged spork. As of now I think that Rocksteady was made to make a live service game by Warner Bros and Rocksteady couldn't make a Justice League game because Marvel did it, Marvel did it. So they made a game about the second most known group, the Suicide Squad, and Rocksteady wanted to destroy the whole world to make something new, like a phoenix from the ashes of Firefly. Even though yes they'll be making a live service Batman game in the next six years, I think they want to move on to something else in the Warner Bros Kingdom. Maybe a TMT game, I hear Lord of the Rings games need a little arc and herbs and spices or something was just pissed off that they cancelled the Batman game and wanted to kill every iconic DC character most likely I haven't finished the game yet and I wouldn't spoil that for you like everyone else here at the mumbling gamer we respect lore story and mumbles my cold is killing me my voice is going thank you and let's wrap this up this game was a slight letdown and not as good as it could have been. I would recommend it to most DC fans, but if you are an Arkham fan, 
Stay away from it. Stay way away from it. So far away, go to Metropolis. No, not that far. Um, go somewhere else. Go to, where does someone else live? Far away. Darkside's place. That's far away from Gotham, Metropolis, Superman. Anywhere, just stay away from this game. And that's it for this mumble. If you got this far, remember to comment below. Mumble and your thoughts on the game. Is it worth your time or is gas taking it over and destroying it from the inside out? And remember to subscribe and like for future mumbles. And I will see you on the next mumble. Oh, I just want to play as Batman.